So I'm creating this application where you can share that with friends. So you have the lender tab, which is this lender view, and you also have the borrower view. So you can visualize all of the debts you have shared as a lender and you as a borrower. So when a friend lends you some money, but the problem is each view, so each tab has its own filters. So we can sort by ascending, descending, and likewise with the borrower's view. Now the problem is, since I'm handling the state within the tab, whenever I switch back and forth, the state will be lost because the component is unmounted and because I'm using use a state. Now I do not want to introduce extra complexity by using something like Sostand or Redux because they are not designed for that. I just want to keep it simple by using use state and call it a day. Now you might argue and say, okay, well, just move the handling of the state one component up. So whenever we unmount unmount, the state will not be lost and that's completely fine. But again, I do not want to introduce extra complexity. Plus that means I would have to prop drill all the way through. So the best way to handle this is to use the session or local storage of the browser. That way, this state will persist for the session. So let's say I choose descending order. Now, if I come here to the borrowers tab and come back here to the lender tab, what would happen is this state would be lost. But since I'm using a wrapper for the session storage, as we can see, even if I refresh the page, this state is persisted. So if I inspect element and come here over to the application tab, as we can see, I'm storing all of these values in the session storage. So you have the partner email, the skip for pagination, the sort and status. And if I modify this, so let's say ascending, as we can see, this value is persisted in the storage. So how did I accomplish this? Well, for that, I simply created a wrapper for the use state hook called use session storage. It simply returns the state and the set state, just like use state. And in fact, if I hover over set state, as we can see, it is just react that set state action. So let's take a look at its implementation. If I come here to use session storage, I have a this create storage hook function and I pass in this to be session, so I can pass in either session or local. But now let's take a look at this function. As we can see, we have these arguments. We have the key, so the identifier for the storage. In this case, well, I stored it with this key and with the value. Then we pass in the default values. So in case nothing is stored in session or local storage, then we can provide a fallback value. And then we have the validation schema. And this is pivotal. I'm using SOT for validating the data that we get from the value. And this is because we must maintain integrity. With SOT, we can ensure that whatever data we get from the browser API is in the shape we want it to be. Because a user can modify this value. As we can see, we can edit the value and they can change it to whatever they want. So to avoid unwanted behavior, we're using SOD and we pass in the schema. So as we can see, validation schema is this SOD schema. If I come here, we have a skip, we have the status, which is a union, we have the sort, and then the partner email. So all of this is automatically synced up with the use session storage. And then we provide the default values and again, the key. So this is how you would use it. So if I come back here, as we can see, it returns the state. So of type T, we use generics and we make sure that the SOT type, so the SOT schema corresponds with the default values. Then the set state, pretty basic, and then a reset function. So we can get rid of all of these altogether and replace the content with the default values in memory. Now, what about the function itself? Well, we have create a storage hook and we pass in a storage. Now, what is this exactly? Well, I created this abstracted wrapper so you can pass in either session storage 
or local storage since the implementation of the two is identical and both windows so we have window.session storage and window.local storage both of these implement this storage interface so as we can see it provides access to a particular domain session or local storage it allows for example the addition modification or deletion of stored data items so this is a way for us to be able to specify and tell this create storage hook to create it using either session storage or local storage that way we can create this use session storage as well as a use local storage and we simply pass in the storage we want to use what about the implementation itself well we have this stored value so we get from this storage again either session or local storage and we pass in the key and then we let the initial data to be args.default value then we check if there's something stored in the session storage so for example in this case we do have something stored then try to parse and validate using the sort schema so we call dot save parse and then json dot parse the stored value so we make sure that the data we're dealing with must be of type t and then this returns to us a discriminated union that means that if i type in parsed that we only get access to success which is a boolean now in the case this is true then we get access to data in the case that this is not success we do not get access to the data property but we get access to the error property so we check if this is successful so the schema validation is successful then replace the initial data to the one stored and if not we do not do anything so in the case this is invalid we just use the default values provided here in this case where we have default values so again this is just a fallback in case there's no data in the session storage or the data stored is malformed basically now if i come back here we have the state so we pass in the generic and then we return these three values so we return the state as we can see just use a state and then we have the set state function and here we get access to this argument which is action which is set state action and we pass in the generic now the reason i do this is because i want to maintain the same behavior as the set state function i do not want to just return let's say here set state i do not want to just return new value of type t and this is void i want to keep the same behavior as the use state hook has which means that you can either pass in if i hover over this we can pass in the previous state which is a callback we get the previous state and we must return the new state or we can pass in the new state so this is useful if you want to use the previous state for some logic perhaps you're mapping over an array and you need to check a condition or you can simply pass in the new state and it's simply going to return the state altogether so that's why i do this to keep the same behavior as set state but simply a wrapper that is going to persist the data in either local storage or session storage so we invoke set state which is this one we get the previous state and then we check for the new state so if the action so this one right here is a function so let's remember previous state of type s we must return s if it is of type function then we invoke the function by passing the previous state and in that case it is the raw new value without the callback the new state is simply the data we the developers passed into this function and once this is done we simply set the item so rx.key and then we stringify the new state and we just return it as simple as that and now for the reset function it's pretty basic just remove item and then we set the state to the default values so nothing fancy so as we can see this hook is very basic we're simply validating it with our sort schema and we're just wrapping set state to save the data in the local or session storage 
But this is great because we can use this hook just as we use use a state, but under the hood, it is going to persist everything. Now I can get rid of this, and if I come back here to the use local storage, for example, we have this function get storage and we pass in either local or session. Why am I doing this? Well, since I'm using Next.js, it is going to render everything initially in the server. So the problem is if I pass in the window.session storage, then window will not be present in the server since window is an object that comes from the API of the browser. So I have to check if we're in the browser, then let us return the window.session storage or window.local storage. And in the case that we're not in the browser, that means that Next.js is server side rendering this, then we simply return dummy storage. So we return everything that the session interface implements. So all of these functions, which are present in both session storage and local storage. Now, if you're using vid or create react app, which you shouldn't use, then you can skip this and simply pass in the local storage. But again, since this is running first in the server, we need to use this workaround. And in fact, we can change this to a function instead of an arrow function. And this will be of type storage. And now we can make sure that whatever we're returning is what these two implement. So now by invoking this create a storage hook, it is returning a function, which is the hook. So use local storage, use session storage, and then we can just come here and instead of use a state, use session storage, we pass in the schema and we call it a day. Now, my point is always use validation libraries for anything that is out of your control. For example, the browser API for local and session storage is not entirely in your control. The user can just come here and modify these if they want. So you should never assume that the data that you're storing is the data that you will be getting back. And this applies to anything, not just local and session storage, even servers, APIs that you do not have control over. So for anything that is out of your control, even the query parameters, you should create a custom hook, you provide a schema, and it abstracts everything for you. If you're not doing this in your applications, go ahead and refactor everything. You will thank me later. Having done this, this wraps up the video. I hope you learned something new, and if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. See you soon.